mobile stuff. I've had multiple antennas fed by one piece of coax, uh, 50 ohms, and uh, they were all fairly close to resonance somewhere in the middle of the band. Um, a resonant antenna, something that is not needed to be tuned, will always, always, always outperform something that you have to tune. No matter if you have ladder line, open end, or uh, open feeder, or, uh, you know, quack fed, doesn't matter. Um, if you got to tune it, you're going to lose it. <laughs> yeah, okay, it makes sense. Um, yeah, the fan dipole, I think that's... Uh, that's kind of where I want to go, I think. And I'd really like to have an 80. I just got to talk to the neighbors and see if I can use a tree. <laughs> uh, but a 40, 20, 10 uh, would be great. Because I'd have 40, 20, 15, and 10. Um, yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome. And yes, I, I decided to start videotaping it now. Yeah, right on. W4 DVE 87 QT on the videotape. Uh, fan dipole is a freaking awesome idea. Uh, your 40, 20, and 10 will uh, work for you quite well. And I also wonder, did I happen to mention to you the isotron antennas? I have an isotron 80 meter antenna, and uh, for about the top uh, 30 or 40 clicks on 80 meters, it works very, very well literally uh, six feet off the ground, but the higher you go, the lower it goes in frequency, and it comes with some uh, tuning rods that can help you get lower if you uh, want to go quite a bit lower over. Yeah, you did tell me about uh, the isotron. Uh, is that more for, uh, is that a lower takeoff angle on that, or, uh, so I'm mostly interested in, uh, in Envis. Depends on your height above the dirt with your antenna. If you have it right off the ground, it's going to be in this. If you have it uh, halfway off the ground, it's going to be more towards the uh, lower horizon. And then obviously the higher you go, the lower to the horizon it goes. But uh, I would imagine with an 80 meter uh, antenna such as that, anything from about 10 feet off the ground to probably close to uh, 30 or 40 feet off the ground, is going to be an invis uh, situation for you, and, and you may not have to worry about a low takeoff angle where it's going to, you know, uh, shoot the horizon and get you in Europe and Asia all the time. Over. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Invis is what I'm interested in. So, um, you know, fill in that skip zone. There's a lot going on on 80. I can listen to quite a bit of it. I just can't get out. I mean, I talked to a guy over in Camas once. Um, you know, <laughs> and that was about it. Uh, on my 15 watts and I tried to get into I got into a net it's like the late time net or something like that where the, all they try to do is make 80 meter contacts and I made it into the net with net control but you know the guy uh, the guy within the five within five miles of me couldn't hear me at all now granted I'm using the 40 meter antenna and trying to load it up you know and uh, you know the SWR and the coax is going to burn up all my 15 watts. I probably got a half a watt out if I was lucky over. Oh, yeah. Especially if you're tuned. Uh, W4DBE87QT. Yeah, this particular antenna, um, it basically models a half wave antenna. And, uh, you know, the closer to the ground you are, the higher to 4 megahertz you are. The higher off the ground, the closer to uh, 3.5 you are. Um, but it's, it's really difficult for the majority of us to get it high up enough off the ground to get it resonant down towards the lower part of the uh, band. So, um, you know, if you were able to get it uh, 20 feet, 30 feet off the ground, you'd kick some serious butt. I had it 20 feet off the ground once, and it was resonant probably right around the... Uh, uh, 38.4 to 38.8 maybe without a tuner, and then, you know, obviously a little bit more flexibility with the tuner, but uh, it was impressive. I just couldn't believe that an antenna that looks like a little tiny, you know, three-foot square birdcage could actually do anything at all. And, uh, you know, if, if, if I uh, actually can remember, maybe one of these days I'll throw this thing in the in the truck and, and bring it over here and let you plug that thing in and see, you know, what it's like for you. 
Oh, that'd be awesome, man. Um, yeah, I was wondering if you were still using it. But, uh, yeah, that'd be way cool. Um, yeah, before I go that route, though, I think I'd like to try a wire. It's just, uh, you know, it cost a few dollars. <laughs> I'm a cheapskate, you know, so... Uh, right on, man. Well, this is cool. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, though, because, uh, you know, unless you want me to keep it going so that you can hear your voice hours on hours on end. Oh, no, we're good. I hear my voice in my head every day. <laughs> Hello, YouTubers. Uh, W4DBE87QT.